Hey my Geekers, Caitlin here, and for this week's video I thought I'd give you a break from seeing my face and do a complete video on overdoses and their treatment. I won't touch too much on the presentation, but more on the treatment. So let's get started. So let's start with Tylenol overdoses. What do you give in this situation? Great, you give NAC or N-acetylcysteine. Okay, what about an aspirin overdose? Does anyone remember mud piles? that mnemonic that you use for metabolic acidosis. Well, the S stands for salicylates. So aspirin is a cause of metabolic acidosis. So bicarb helps alkalize the urine and increases ex excretion of aspirin. Hemodialysis is also sometimes definitively needed. Okay, very similar to aspirin overdoses. What do you need in a TCA or tricyclic antidepressant overdose? Great, you also need bicarb in this case. Okay, now what do you give in an opioid or a benzo overdose? Awesome. So opioid, you obviously give Narcan, which is naloxone. And um, in a benzo overdose, you give flumazenil. And Narcan is an opioid antagonist, and flumazenil is a GABA receptor antagonist. Okay, what about the illicit drugs like cocaine? Great, so cocaine, there's no particular antidote, but you wanna treat the symptoms. So if the patient's having a lot of anxiety or they have an elevated heart rate, you can give them Ativan. Um, you can give them clonidine for their high blood pressure. Um, and what drug do you not wanna give in this case? Right, you don't wanna give any type of beta blocker. With beta blockers involvement and cocaine, there will be unopposed alpha stimulation and possibly worsening of cocaine's alpha stimulation, and that this could possibly lead to coronary vasoconstrictions. So no beta blockers when you suspect cocaine use in any of your patients, especially in an overdose. Okay, switching gears to more common drugs that we see, what do you give in an iron overdose? Great, you give deferoxamine. And remember that iron is radiopaque on x-ray, so if you definitely suspect this, then you can always get an x-ray and try and find it in their tummy. So here you can see some iron supplements that are sitting in the stomach there on this x-ray. And in this next x-ray, you actually see um, some potassium supplements uh, that were taken in. And if you're wondering what the treatment for hyperkalemia is, just refer to my last week's YouTube video um, and go from there. So next let's talk about uh, sulfonylurea overdoses and this is another common drug that people can accidentally overdose in and these are your glipizides or glyburides. Um, and these patients will present with hypoglycemia that is refractory to any type of glucose. Um, I've personally seen this in the emergency department where this patient just took too many of his uh, um, diabetes medicines and then he all of a sudden is just very low in his glucose. He ate breakfast. Um, we gave him a couple D50s, and he was still very low. And the treatment for this is obviously glucose, if, but if that doesn't work, which it usually doesn't because it's refractory to glucose, um, octreotide is the treatment here. So what do you give in a beta blocker or a calcium channel blocker overdose? So these patients are obviously going to have a very low heart rate, um, sometimes they can have hypoglycemia, um, hypotension, some respiratory depression, pulmonary edema, many different things, but that low heart rate you have to treat. Um, definitely go through your ACLS protocol, give them atropine, um, and then refractory to atropine, you can consider transcutaneous pacing, or you can just try glucagon, which has been shown to help in beta blocker and calcium channel blocker toxicity. So the last thing I want to talk about is what you would give in a warfarin overdose. And most of the time when people have high INRs from warfarin, it is usually just from misdosing or taking too many doses, and it's usually not from an overdose. But nonetheless, there are many different types of treatments for warfarin. Um, so you can see it here. It's also called Coumadin. Um, and it can cause many complications and bleeding inside the body. You can see here on this CT, there is a total hemothorax um, that was caused by a warfarin. This patient, their INR was in five, and um, the bleeding in their chest just kind of overtook them, so they need reversal of their warfarin and get their INR back into the right range. So what do you do in these situations? 
So the main treatment for warfarin when the INR gets out of the therapeutic range for the patient is vitamin K because what is warfarin? It's a vitamin K antagonist. So if your INR is between 4.5 and 10 and there's no bleeding, you definitely just need to stop the warfarin and you can give plus or minus K at that time. If that INR is greater than 10, definitely give vitamin K. And if there's any sort of bleeding at all, get a vitamin K plus prothrombin complex concentrate and fresh frozen plasma. Thank you.